Well, welcome back to Ringworm. Had a different idea for a video uh, this time. Been waiting for two days to make this video. Uh, waiting for it to stop snowing, but it's apparently not going to, so we'll just go ahead anyway. Um, I'd mentioned in a previous video, uh, if anybody had interest in knowing what it costs to live like this, uh, full time in the woods, in the forest, without a house, without running water, just camping, um, that I would do a short video and there are several people that were interested. So here it is. I'm in uh, the UP, Upper Peninsula in Michigan. Uh, most of you that have seen a bunch of the videos know that. I bought this property uh, a little over a year ago and a buddy and I, Tito, if you've seen the early videos, you know him. Uh, he and I packed up our tents and just moved out here. Um, it's pretty remote. There's not much around, no neighbors. It's a great place, really. We looked at, I looked at a lot, I mean, hundreds of properties online. Um, and then probably went and saw, Tito and I went and saw probably 20 properties before we bought this. And this lifestyle is definitely not for everybody. Um, you know, there are a lot of people that are interested in tiny houses and uh, homesteading and uh, building cabins and stuff like that, which I would like to build a cabin, but I don't want to live in it. I love living outside. All I want to do is camp anyway, so coming out here is just like I, I don't have to go home from vacation. I can stay out here, stay in my tent full time. And as many of you know, I just, I have a couple of chainsaws. I have a chainsaw mill and for recreation, for fun, I just build random stuff. Just finished building a queen size bed swing out in the forest back here. A uh, cabin on stilts, which was like a, supposed to be a deer blind. A lot of other stuff. I actually walk around and show you that stuff just so you can get some idea of what I actually paid to build those. But property is cheap if you're willing to, to go to it. I know the big uh, stumbling block for a lot of people, they can't imagine being able to afford the property in the first place. A lot of people ask if this is my property or if I'm squatting or I'm camping out in the National Forest, which I've spent... I've spent the better part of my adult life doing that not not just squatting but camping I, I when i was in my early 20s i took a break from college and uh spent four months on the appalachian trail and as they say about the at it will ruin your life and it <laughs> it did it made me realize that you can step away from what you think is normal you know the nine to five the working in order to afford stuff uh and there's nothing wrong with that if that's what uh, people like, but I think there are an awful lot of folks that just have a, a feeling that that's not all there is. And I'm not a, I don't really like to work all that much. I mean, I like hard work. I love doing this stuff. I love building. I love creating stuff. I thought about buying property for 13, 14 years or so when I started looking and finally I just said, you know, it's got to happen. And Tito said, yep, let's do it. Um, <laughs> the agreement was that if I bought the property, he would have to buy the, uh, timber tough log tongs. I don't know if you guys saw that video, the tongs that you pull logs behind the four wheeler. You still can buy property in the contiguous 48 for a thousand dollars an acre. And, you know, I looked at a lot of properties, um, 20 acres, 40 acres, even bigger. One property I put an offer on, uh, I think was 40 acres for around 50 grand and it just the way it worked out it it'd been on the market for i think 15 or 20 years and the guy wouldn't let it go for whatever reason so um there's a lot of property like that you know you pay less the harder it is to get to another property i considered buying was 27 acres for twenty seven thousand dollars, and it was only river access which i mean that's why it's cheap and if you want to do this kind of thing you probably don't want neighbors. There'd be no neighbors. I would have done the river access. I think that would have been really fun, but there was no legal place to park long-term. So, you know, if we could have parked and took everything on, in on a barge or made a boat or bought a cheap boat or taken it on canoe, I definitely would have done it, but there was really no access, um, long-term access. So anyway, what I, you know, what I have into this property is the cost of the property. I have regular bills like everybody else. I have health insurance. I have car insurance and a few other things like you all do. I still have a car. I park it out a uh, quarter mile from here and then I have to ride the four wheeler in because there's no uh, driveway or road back here. So there are those bills. I, you know, paid cash for the property. I know it seems like a lot of money, but if you can, 
if you can save up and you take your time looking, don't just you know say, well, there's nothing out there that I can afford. There are properties out there for everybody. If you can find just the right one and you don't mind walking your stuff in or dragging your stuff in, you know, snowshoeing in, whatever, you can do it. So other than that, this is an extremely inexpensive way to, way to live. And I'll walk you around here and just show you, I mean, most of you know what's here. You've seen all the building projects, seen me build all this crazy stuff. I'll take you around real quick and just point out how I built this stuff and how I did it for almost no money. Let's have a look. Hey, it's the me of the future. Uh, I was editing this video together and I was thinking of a few more things that I wanted to stick in here. Um, so I'll jump in a couple times throughout the video just to throw in a couple more ideas. Um, I did about five minutes of looking and in Oregon, Texas, Colorado, Arkansas, Arizona, California and New Mexico I found five acre prop properties for five grand or less and those are the those are the states I didn't even know that about you know I know of properties for that price you know a thousand dollars an acre or less in in several other states and I know they're not perfect properties whatever that means but and that's totally fine if you know it's not the perfect property it's got this problem and that problem whatever i'm just saying that there is property out there that's that cheap and if you've got the money to spend on a thousand acres of you know virgin forest with a lake and a river and a waterfall and you know a snow snow-capped mountain in norway you should go for that but if you can make do if you can find a way to do it uh if you just have a few grand plus i mean as you go up in size uh, the price per acre comes down. So, you know, if it's five grand for five acres, 20 grand is not, or 20 acres is not 20 grand, it's like 12 or 15. So it's out there. So if you want to do the property thing, you want to take off on your own somewhere, just know that there's still places out there to do it. And you don't have to spend the next, the next or the last 20 years paying for it. All right, I want to try to tell you what everything here costs. Hopefully you are the kind of person that would want to do something like this. I mean, the thing to remember about doing something somewhat ridiculous, like moving to the woods in a tent, is that it's not permanent. It doesn't have to be forever. If you do it for a month and you don't like it, you can sell the property. I get it's a headache, but it's not forever. It's uh. You know, three years later, you'll be laughing about the time you thought you'd move to the woods. But if you do love it, um, it's a great way to live. You can basically spend your day doing whatever you want, as long as you're not spending money. That's the big thing. Don't spend money, except on, you know, the stuff that you really have to have. Food and, uh, you know, occasionally you need a piece of camping equipment or whatever it is, or some a box of screws or something. But it's worth a try. I mean... Who knows how many people would actually do this and think it's as fun as I, as I do? Uh, I don't know. I think the world would be a better place if more people tried it out. I did have to uh, buy this. Um, this is like a 2000 or 2002 um, Honda 350. Uh, it's a real small four-wheeler, uh, full-time four-wheel drive. Had the only thing it had going for it when I bought it. It had nice tires on it, which are great in the snow and. And mud I had to put a winch on it so the winch um, the winch plus the plate you know might be less than 200 bucks so I think I spent 2200 on the four-wheeler and like 200 on that so that's the biggest by far the biggest uh, expenditure I had of this whole thing other than buying the property well it's pretty up there I don't know if you can see the Sun finally peeking through Tito and I built this first thing when we got out here um, you know this stuff you think well it's you, you can clearly see it's a it's a tarp but we did it because it was fast it was cheap it was quick it was waterproof um, but this thing this whole thing cost basically the price of the tarps that's it it's probably too dark in here to see anything we'll give it a try i came out here with two hand-me-down chainsaws my dad had he had one really old craftsman that 
I used for milling until it just rattled itself apart. And then another little bitty chainsaw that he, I think he found in the garbage or something. And Tito and I used those for a long time and eventually just decided, hey, we're gonna stay out here. We wanna build all this stuff and we're gonna have to mill a lot of lumber. So we bought, what is this, two, um, 261. I think that's a, about a $600 chainsaw and you don't have to spend 600 bucks on a chainsaw. We did it just cause I like to mill a lot of stuff and build a lot of stuff. And this is a great saw for the size, um, for the dollar. And it's got a two year warranty. So anything goes wrong, we could take it back. Then I got another little uh, still back there. I would not spend money on two different saws, um, except that there were two of us here for, I don't know what it was, four months or something. And we did a lot of this stuff. One of us was milling, one was cutting trees and uh, dragging logs around. So other than that, you can get a used still Husqvarna or something for a couple hundred bucks, a few hundred bucks. And if you're milling really small, light stuff like I do, this is all cedar. You know, I'm not milling logs that are two feet diameter. I only go up to maybe 12 inches diameter. Um, you can mill it with a small saw, an inexpensive saw. And you know, if you keep doing it a long time and you want to buy something nicer, but don't spend money if you don't have to. I've said this before in the videos, but to me, everything that I buy, I think, how long would I have to go to a job and work to save that amount of money, not make that amount? You know, if it's 200 bucks, it's not like you can go work $20 an hour for 10 hours. That's how long it takes. I mean, to actually save it on top of, you know, all your other expenditures. And if it takes, you know, it take me a week to save 200 bucks, I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to go sit at a job to buy that $200 thing. I mean, there's some things, you know, obviously tools. I do have a lot of tools that I've collected over the last 20 years, but I just don't like spending money. Don't like to work. Don't like to work for it. When I build stuff out here, I'll often put things together with screws. Um, I have all different sizes of screws in a bag, like, uh, I don't know what it is, three quarters of an inch up to three inch. And I'll put stuff together and then I'll take it all back apart, take all the screws out just to save the money from the screws and put it together with nails. Because this stuff is all from that Habitat for Humanity Restore. And I know people are getting sick of hearing me talk about this, but like this box of screws, it was full. I think it was 20 bucks. My dad found that one. I got an entire, this entire box was full of uh, 16 penny coated nails. They were a little bit rusty. The whole thing was 10 bucks. Like all this stuff is from the Habit Habitat Restore. So if you ever go to one of those and you see boxes of nails, just pick, pick up the whole box for five, you know, five, ten bucks and save them. And I mean, all this stuff, that's the price of building all this stuff is nails. Even this, this stove, which is, I don't usually sit in here and use this, but this stove I found at a yard sale for 20 bucks. It is not a good stove at all. You know, kind of looks cool, but it's a piece of junk. It, it you know. You can see through the doors and see through the lid, but I mean, you could spend three, four five, 600 bucks on a good stove or uh, $20 and make do with it. Even this stuff, like these came out of my brother's house and I did some painting for them. They're all door hinges, got all new hinges. So I keep all these and everything that I build with hinges has door hinges on it, no matter how big or small. Sorry, I know this light is super harsh and looks bad on camera, but this thing is not normally in here. Uh, this goes with the shower. Uh, you guys probably seen the shower build video. Um, I did have to buy that, bought it new. I don't know what it was, like 60, 80 bucks on Amazon. So there's an expenditure, propane. Um, I finally burned through my uh, camp stove that I use. I've been using for 20 years. Uh, for all the food, all cooking, melting snow for water in the winter. And I finally just, it burned a hole right through the bottom. So I have to get a new one. So I dragged my uh, shower burner in here to cook on just for a week or so. You know, with chainsaw stuff, I don't know how you teach yourself to use a chainsaw. I didn't have hundreds of hours running them. I was a wildfire fighter for a couple of years. Uh, so we had to take chainsaw classes and you, you know, you learn how to be safe with them. Uh, how to fell trees and stuff, but I mean this stuff works. This is It's safe, 
They're 25 bucks on Amazon. You need a helmet. You need some chaps. Got chaps in here. I don't know what those were, like 30 bucks. As long as they're safe, they're not nice. They don't, you know, flex when you kneel down, but that stuff totally works. So I'm in a little bit of safety gear for chainsawing. All right, check this out. This is all these tools I got at a secondhand store. I got some of them even still have the... Well, that was the most expensive one, seven bucks for a post hole digger. But all these together were 40 bucks. I was like, well, I needed a shovel, I needed a rake, I needed a hoe, and I saw all these and I just bought everything that was in the bin. So I actually just, my uh, uh, $3 broom was starting to rot out there, so I just uh, glued it back together. I'll keep that going as long as possible. Another good reason to not have super high end expensive stuff is, I mean, if you had a thousand dollar grill i don't know if they make that you probably wouldn't use it out in the snow and the rain and everything else and you know I, I guess if you're not as remote as i am there's always a chance that somebody will come by and with sticky fingers and steal your stuff but you know you can kind of solve most of that by this isn't here for security but i have these trail cams all over the place i caught a deer standing right there the other night right in the middle but also keeps an eye on your stuff but I don't leave here too often. Uh, when I do, I take everything of value with me so I don't ever have to worry about that. But there's some companies that make, several companies that make really good theft deterrent systems too. Um, they don't take batteries. They sell them in different sizes. I don't know, you've probably seen them before. This one, uh, this one came in nine millimeter. But there are lots of others. If you get one of those while you're on your property and uh, you take the expensive stuff with you, or not expensive stuff with you when you leave, you don't really have to worry about it. What else? Are you bored? You want to see more stuff? And I can just prove to you that this is almost free to live out here. If you just saw the most recent videos, you saw this. This I should have bought when I first moved out here. This was at 3,000 feet or something of a uh, Cajun pole line. And it's 2,500 pound test. The whole thing was 150 bucks. That's enough rope slash string to build and lace anything together you want out here. It's great. I used it for that entire bed. And about five other things so far and i've only had it for a couple of weeks but i mean if you buy string and rope as you need it it can cost a lot of money that's a good way to be a cheapskate buy in bulk this thing i built all chainsaw milled lumber of course just to keep i do have a generator you know if you can find anybody that'll gift you nice stuff uh stuff that people aren't using <laughs> take it when i started uh getting serious about finding a property i knew i was going to get one i we got a, i got a small storage unit and started going to all the second hand stores and just looking for stuff that i was going to need anyway and just started packing junk in there and uh you know a lot of this stuff the hand tools rope chain stuff like that i bought instead of going out when i actually needed it going out and having to buy you know retail at ace hardware or something just stocked all that stuff up picnic table chainsaw milled lumber super heavy i don't know what that thing would cost otherwise uh, but you can make them in uh, about a day if you've got a mill you guys have all seen my tent deck chainsaw milled lumber these were this thing was all solid trees when we got i mean it all looked like like that over there this is i mean it's just solid forest this thing slowly have cleared out little by little taking down the scary dead trees and uh the real straight ones uh to use for for lumber but got sick of sleeping in the in the mud and dirt so built this thing um milled it all log frame underneath and put it all together with screws got everything set pulled the screws out put it all back together with super super cheap nails and it probably saved if i put it together with real screws it probably cost 50 bucks and it cost four bucks instead you guys want to see more stuff or you get the point I'll just keep going. I mean, you're getting another tour. This is just like the tour video I did. The shower is kind of out of commission. Oh, nice. These are peats. Um, check out the shower vid if you want to see this thing being made. Like the first month that we were out here. Uh, logs pallet that big burner sits there 
And we get water from down this trail. I dug a channel. There's a video on that too, digging out a drainage and a little hole so we could scoop water, get it in buckets in the four-wheeler and bring it back here or uh, later on in the year. Use that Ryobi water pump pump that you saw earlier and I string a, a hose from down there all the way to these tanks. All right, here's another one. You think you got to pay for a well. A well was going to be seven to nine thousand dollars to have one put in here and they had to be able to get three enormous trucks out here which is never going to happen i don't want cars to ever be able to get out here so i wasn't going to do that so instead if you can see under here these are uh what are they 275 gallon tanks you can buy them on uh craigslist sorry to keep spinning you around like that uh they're used for food honey um anything in solution that they, or any food that comes as a liquid for big bakeries or whatever, they can only use them once. So they sell them for really cheap. I think you can get them 50 to a hundred bucks uh, a piece. And that's enough water for drinking and showering for about six months for me. So I fill them up, you know, every couple months I just top them up, but uh, there's a cheap way that you don't have to pay to have a well dug. It would be super cool to have even a hand pump well out here, but it's all rock and there's no way to do it myself. So that's just what I do. But you know, you just find ways to make it work. Instead of saying it can't be done, how could it be out there with water? Just, to, just make something up. You guys have seen Tito's tent platform. That was made out of pallets. Man, that is some deep stuff to stick on the trails. Also, if you get a piece of land uh, and it's covered by a species of tree that's not great for building, you can get limitless pallets online. Look on Facebook, Craigslist, anywhere. Um, companies that get stuff shipped on pallets just have to get rid of them for the most part. And you can look on YouTube and watch, watch all the videos of people building crazy stuff out of pallet wood. You can build a whole house out of it. Also, you can find uh, scrap lumber online all sorts of different dimensions you can even offer to rip down somebody's old uh, barn for them and just take the take the wood pull the nails cut the bad ends off and i mean it's endless so don't think you have to have you know white pine on the property in order to be able to build stuff all right in the event that you guys haven't seen the uh deer castle videos i'll run you out there real quick just to show you how you can build basically a, a log cabin, not log cabin, but you know, made from logs, made from uh, lumber here for almost free. If you want to build yourself a little house, you could do it for almost free. And if you want to make yourself a shooting range, built myself a little table here. Got some stools and benches and stuff. Uh, these are out of, I can't, geez, I can't even walk down there. It's too deep. Made my own uh, range markers there and made steel targets. Uh, found some used chain to hang up the targets down there. The steel I, uh, that I used for the targets hanging down there are, it's, it was just a scrap steel I bought from a welding guy. He had a big bin and I just took the thick ones and used uh, my lovely Ryobi angle grinder and, oh, that screwed on there. Cut a bunch of different sizes of these uh, steel targets and so this uh, whole thing probably cost maybe five bucks to make a shooting range. Actually, I just cut it out. It goes back this way too now. So there's a little rifle rest back there. Well, how cool is that? Have your own shooting range for free. Get some property. You won't regret it. Also with that cheap batch of scrap steel I got, I made a bunch of these log dogs. I mean, I didn't even know, I didn't know what dimensions they were supposed to be or anything. So I made three different sets. I think these are four inch, seven inch, and 10 inch. That's from tip to tip and I found that these bigger ones they work equally well it doesn't really make any difference I haven't used the little ones too much and then also made these plates for the mill same steel just painted them cut them out with an angle grinder uh, if you do want to make the mill setup I'll just give you the measurements real fast 
found these online. I'll put in the description the video I found them on. Somebody else is making them out of YouTube. 12 inches wide. 5 inches. And then these are 2 inches by one and a half so that they stick out the tubes stick out proud of here and then they're just uh, two inch two inch square tubes so we make all sorts of stuff out of craft steel i got another pile in the lean to just various size stuff various thickness and there was he did the welding shop just sells the scraps by the pound and i think it, i don't know what i paid five or ten bucks for all that steel and they're just weird sizes but if you got an angle grinder, you can cut out all that stuff yourself. Uh oh, we'll make one other stop real quick. from the uh, video there's the first half of uh, gazebo <laughs> I haven't gotten around to the gazebo yet look at the snow on this thing <laughs> Isn't that cool again oops log frame chainsaw milled lumber doesn't that look just cozy on there but I'm gonna do just log frame on this Oh, so I also got, uh, before I came out here, I looked on, I think it was on Facebook, searched for um, shingles on the marketplace and found, I don't know, it was like 18 packs of shingles for a hundred bucks. You know, whenever people do their roofs, you always order 4% or 8% over and people always end up with extras. So that was enough to, those shingles for a hundred dollars would be enough to do this screened in porch gazebo thing, the deer castle. I want to make some kind of a tool room, um, but I figured I'd do about four different uh, structures, uh, roof them. And the Habitat Restore got tar paper. It's like five bucks a roll for tar paper. So you can do the entire roof, like on the Deer Castle, we'll go out there. You can do the whole roof on that thing for 25 bucks, maybe. I mean, you know, if you want to do it the right way, buy the book, then you can't do it for that price. You know, you got to have drip edge, you know, flashing in, in places, but I don't care. This is just me out here screwing around. There's no, there's no building code for a, a deer blind, you know. This thing I just finished in the uh, last video, again, virtually free. That's one ugly tarp, I know, but this is that Cajun pole line log frame free you can always get free mattresses it's a free mattress and it was i wrapped it three times in bags and put a cover on it you know built a headboard on it free uh put it together with screws so i probably did use 50 screws maybe one box of screws on it there's no money that goes into this it's just you know your time and <laughs> a lot of fun <laughs> well all of a sudden it looks like a really weird color on the camera and I thought there was something wrong with it, and then <laughs> I look up from it, and that's actually the color out here right now. It's weird. It's snowing, the sun's setting, and it's all bouncing. That glow is bouncing off the snow. It looks like uh, we're in an old movie or something, like sepia. All right. I'm only showing you this just to prove that you could, not that you want to live in this, but you could make this any size. This was supposed to be a deer blind, and got a little out of control this was say 25 bucks for the roofing because it was quote used everything else is logs chainsaw milled lumber so if you did want to build yourself a house or a cabin and you don't have to have all of this certain thing and that certain thing i mean you can get windows at uh the restore as well you know, any size two pane or three pane double hung window for like 20 bucks. So you could put real windows in this for like a hundred dollars. Yeah, those of you that saw the videos of me building this thing, um, probably already know that there is, this didn't cost anything. Um, this is all, I know 
I know what you're thinking. If he says chainsaw milled one more time, I'm going to stab myself in my freaking eye. But this is all chainsaw milled lumber. Oh, I did pay for the heater. Again, that was like 70 bucks or something at Wally World. But yeah, I think the only thing other than the, the shingles, the tar paper, and a few screws, most of this is nails, but a few screws in here that cost me money was the caulk. And I didn't even use real caulk. I used like roofing tar or something <laughs> to caulk the whole thing. So I think I used like eight, eight cans of that stuff at $2.50 a piece. So this place is basically free. It's the propane tank that goes with the um, shower and that big, that big burner. Um, I brought it out here just to finish it off, but that was, I found that on Craigslist or something or Facebook. Um, it's a hundred pound tank and it was full and I got it for a hundred bucks. So, I mean, that's enough fuel for, let's see, I brought that out here exactly a year ago and I took a shower every single day and then other people be in here taking showers. And now I've run that heater for a few weeks, four weeks maybe off that and it's still not empty. So super cheap as well. <laughs> the size of these snowflakes. <laughs> you can see them. <laughs> They're monsters. All right, so what are we up to now? Price of the property, some uh, resale, resale stuff, camping equipment. Um, I don't think there are going to be that many people that are really interested in doing this like I do, staying in a tent. But if you want to build a little cabin or something, you probably need a four-wheeler to drag logs around. Uh, to get your crap in and out you need a chainsaw the mill I didn't mention the chainsaw mill was like $80 or something. Um, that's Granberg. They make great chainsaw mills I got the smallest one that they sell and I think I get it on sale for like 80 bucks or something usually they're 120 or something like that. You've got to love to camp But if you got a piece of property just think about it if you got a piece of property like this remote Hopefully you have a place you can leave a car get a four-wheeler you can get into the property drag trees around, whatever. Camp, you know, you got there in the spring, that's what we, well, actually we came out in the winter. It was February when we came, when Tito and I came out here. And I mean, we love winter camping, so that was no problem for two, three months. And then, you know, but if you went out in the spring, you've got all summer to build whatever you want. You can certainly build one of these in the summer. That'd be super easy. The only thing I can address is what this would be like with kids. Once you've got kids, that's like out of my realm. But to do it on your own or do it with a, significant other it's totally doable super affordable the biggest thing and sorry i'm just going to keep saying this is if you can learn to live on very little you know whether you're living like this or you're living in a city you know the more you get away get away from buying stuff as a way of life you know if you can just think of this thing cost me x number of hours or days or weeks at work if it's worth it, maybe you'll love your job, but if you love your job, you're probably not still watching this video. But anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, like it if you would. Subscribe, I'm gonna keep building stuff like this out, out here. Like I said, just finish that uh, bed up, and I'm thinking about a, I know I've been threatening this for six months probably, I'm thinking about building a deck, like a 20 foot high deck. And I do have a way to get up there now. So I'm thinking about topping some trees and doing a deck, that might be the next thing. A little afraid to do it to stand on a platform 20 feet up and run a chainsaw by myself i mean i'm not afraid to do it just think you know in that situation if you did get hurt you'd not only be in the middle of nowhere but you'd also be stuck in a tree so i don't know might have to wait till somebody's here just to cut those trees but uh anyway thanks again subscribe if you want to see some more projects i'll be here going into year two thanks